Hello and welcome back. I'm Rachel. I'm Hannah. And this is the You Talking to Me podcast. And if you can look at Hannah and my outfits, can you guess without looking at the title what film we are reviewing? We're supposed to resemble an animal or insect, I suppose. We'll give you one more second. It's the B movie, everyone's favorite weird animated love story of the century. So, Hannah, let's uh, hear that recap real quick before we get into the weirdness of all of this. All right. The B movie is an animated movie about bees. One bee who we follow, Barry, doesn't feel like he fits in the world of bees the way they want him to. He doesn't know if he wants to work in honey and have one job until he dies. He leaves the hive one day and meets a human named Vanessa, whom he becomes friends with. One day, Barry finds out the humans are using the bee's honey, and he decides to sue the human race. Barry wins, and all the honey must be given back to the bees. The bees stop producing more honey, which means no more pollination, and the plants start to die. Barry has to come up with a plan to save the planet with his bees. And that is that, my friends. So yeah, you heard that right. Barry sued the human race, but we're not getting to that right quite yet. Um, So this movie has been very popular, like recently as like, the butt of a lot of jokes there was like this trend of like on youtube watching the b movie but every time they say b it doubles in speed i had a kid in one of my classes that i was teaching online try and paste the entire b movie script into the chat box all sorts of things it is culturally like the epitome of meme culture i think right now and When Hannah said that we should review this film for a podcast for Animated Feature Month, I was definitely on board because I remember loving it as a kid and then I watched it and was like, I must have blocked out the entire time I watched this movie because even if I've seen a movie before and can't really recall it, you know, at least when I watch it again, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that now. No, I didn't remember pretty much anything from this movie, which makes me question if I watched it at all, but that's neither here nor there now because I have watched it and I'm very confused about how these people wrote this film. What about you? I feel very similarly to you with the whole blacking out thing because I know it was one of those movies that I watched multiple times when I was younger Like, I remember sitting on my bed with my TV that, which I'm wondering how I watched this because it was one of the TVs that you could put a VHS into. And I'm like, was it just like, I always knew when it was airing on TV or did, I mean, this definitely didn't come out on VHS. It was 2007. So I'm confused and I know I didn't have a DVD of it, but I definitely was like the very beginning. I was like, yes, I remember this. And then uh, I was like, excuse me, what? I, I don't remember that this is what happened. And I'm wondering, did they just put drugs in the movie or something? Is that why we can't remember? <laughs> I don't know. I'm glad that you had a similar experience and that it wasn't just me because that happens a lot where I do, you know, metaphorically black out during a movie and not remember any of it. But I'm glad that we are on the same page here. It was like I was watching the movie for the first time. That's how it felt watching it this time. So if y'all have recently seen the B movie or rewatched it because you knew it was coming for this podcast, let us know if you have had that experience watching it previously and then now watching it again or what your experience watching this movie was because we're very curious if this was a worldwide phenomenon now this movie when it opens up it takes place in the hive we see lots of bees doing their bee thing and like I loved it because there were so many bee puns that I could just sit back and relax I felt comfortable here puns are a place that I feel welcome and I love them I don't care how bad they are 
because all puns are stupid and I love that space. So that was the best opening to a film I think that I've ever seen. Do you like puns, Hannah? Yes, I do like puns. And I found this movie to be funny. And I like the play on things. Like they have a one-stop shop. Barry's getting ready for graduation day when the film starts, movie starts. And he has this, it looks like a soap dispenser basically, but it's honey. And I mean, he like uses it as moisturizer, as hair gel, as toothpaste, as mouthwash, you name it. And then my favorite part though, is he sharpens his little uh, stinger in a pencil sharpener. (laughs) And then he is like flying down the stairs and his mom is like, your dad put in those stairs walk down them or whatever but I don't know it's very funny and I feel like as a kid I definitely wasn't picking up on all the things that were said that were humorous I mean I had to have picked up on some but there was a lot of jokes in there and I can't remember what else but I remember there were some visual ones too like you saw it and it was like a play on a word or something like that as well Yeah, I'm having trouble remembering some of them, but one that I really liked was Barry's friend Adam was like, ooh, she's cute. And he's like, that's your cousin. It's like, oh yeah, because we're all cousins, which I thought was really funny. And then there was a different girl later that he's like, well, aren't we cousins with her? Distantly, Adam, distantly. And so like, that's okay with that one. But I just, I liked, as you said, the play on words, the play on different things that just make sense like I oh I loved the they were talking about different jobs after they graduated they went on like orientation of like all the jobs in the beehive and I loved the one where the bee tester where he like gets tested like getting hit by a fly swatter you know or like getting hit by newspapers and stuff I liked that guy I wouldn't want to be him that be him but I really liked that visual like kind of humor for that guy as well I guess one thing I remember that is kind of I suppose it's a pun uh is Barry and Adam are talking about how they don't understand how something works or I don't know exactly the context but then um Barry's like everything around here just works too well and Adam's like name one example and they're standing in the middle of the road where all the cars are just like weaving in and out of each other and zooming past them and they're just like standing there not being hit and it's like they don't even realize that everything's just like zoom 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 I also love that they go to school for what was it three days day one it's kindergarten (laughs) day two it's middle school day three is college and they were like oh that was an awkward two days like or whatever that was a really funny play because bees only live like a certain amount of time but then they do like drop that like very quickly like throughout the movie like very and a lot of these people should like his dad and mom should like be dead but that's okay whatever um but it they they drop that pretty quickly into the film but it was uh, because right away I was like how old is Barry Jerry Seinfeld plays him which is like the epitome of old people playing teenagers but at least it was a voice and not actually Jerry Seinfeld (laughs) but I was shocked by some of the people that were in this movie like him and then the guy who plays Ken which is like Vanessa's boyfriend is a popular voice and I can't think of who it is I don't know his name but he's very popular and love him but this I think we need to talk about some of the action and plot points of this film though because okay first is that you get assigned a job and you have that job forever and can I just say that job board gave me so much anxiety so it like because there's millions of bees in a beehive and like they die and whoa whoa, 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 wait breaking news he's the guy who plays the emperor from the emperor's new groove or whatever that guy's name is Kronk. sure yes Kronk. that's what i thought i was hoping so but i didn't want to sound stupid on the podcast so breaking news alert (laughs) cool okay okay But okay, so because there's so many bees in the hive and like 
they die every second and like new ones are like joining the job force I guess the job board is just like flipping like constantly you have to pick your job and like hope that you get it in time and like that gave me so much stress and then you're stuck with that job forever which is terrifying and I can understand why Barry does not want to do that although I think he would have been happy being a bee jock or pollen jock or whatever they're called but you have to like be trained specially for that because they're all like huge and scary but basically him and Adam are like trying to impress these ladies because they got a little pollen on them and they're like "Ooh, they must be pollen jocks and so the actual pollen jocks come over and kind of like make fun of them but like invite Barry to go flying with them and when he does a bunch of stuff happens but basically rule number one of bee life is don't speak to humans because apparently um they speak the same language which was weird but he breaks that rule because Vanessa saves his life and he wants to thank her. And I was like, I guess that's enough for me to break the rule. But like, he did not last very long not breaking that rule. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm trying to put myself in that situation. If I was that bee and I went out in the world, would I try to talk to the human? I mean, probably. Probably. <laughs> Hannah yes. following rules? good point good point <laughs> what are we where, what what's what alternate universe are we in one where bees can talk apparently actually maybe the bees around us are just really good and don't talk and actually follow the rules so who knows if we live in this bee world or not but hopefully they don't find out that we're using their honey but that is I can't wait till we get to that point because I have so many questions about that lawsuit and about the outcome and everything because there's such mixed signals there but that's okay yeah that's interesting and also the lawyer is voiced by some someone whose voice I recognize too he's from like a Monsters Inc movie I would believe oh was he Sully yeah I will be looking into it um but what did you think of the animation style in it well I wasn't really like offended by it I didn't think it was super good but it's also 2007 and some of the movies that I've watched recently are like like soul when we watched soul holy crap watching that made me like weep it was so pretty right and this one it it felt animated the whole time which is fine and I think it's also the style of the script like if I was the person writing the script I would have had to have been on lots of drugs but like I think it it fit the style of comedy that it was portraying and the fact that it's pretty much geared towards children they don't care and it like some of the shots were really good like over the park and you saw all of the flowers and stuff was really good but then you'd get like the humans and they looked a little weird like I don't know their skin looked like it had like streaks on it it reminded me of like they're like carved out of wood like that I never picked up a wood vibe but I I actually think that I like this animation style more than soul well I mean hear me out here so sometimes you know if you're watching a movie that's animated you want it to look animated and this looks animated whereas soul I kept thinking like are you sure this is drawn like are you sure this isn't real and so soul for looking like a realistic thing uh, can't beat it. This movie, though, looks like animation, like how you expect animation to look. And it's not like that animation that's the 2D, like the old or whatever that I don't really like. So I actually like I wrote down it. I love the animation because I love the way that it looks exactly how I would expect an animated movie to look, if that makes sense. And it is the guy from Monsters, Inc. He plays Sully. He's also in The Emperor's New Groove as well. So that's interesting. Is it John Goodman? It is John Goodman. He's very famous. Like, he's a famous regular actor as well as voice actor. Like, he's made lots of money. Roseanne. Things. Yeah, he was also in boy erased as the like preacher dad and lots of lots and lots and lots of things lots of things he's wonderful what did you think about 
Vanessa and Barry's friendship. Wink. Okay. You know, people always say that, like, oh, don't put gays in media because it's going to, like, make your child be gay or whatever. Excuse me. You, you're fine with a bee and a human, like, getting it, but not two people the same gender. <laughs> also, didn't isn't, like, the rationale sometimes of like oh you know we let them be gay then we let them be transgender then we let them be pan all these weird things you know what's next bestiality it's in this freaking movie like we're allowing this to happen like and that's your rationale on like the lgbt culture is bad because it might lead to something crazier it's like i don't think you understand how sexuality works like that's not like if I all of a sudden watch the L word I'm not gonna turn lesbian and then after that and I experiment a while I'm not I'm done with women I want something a little crazier how about a dog like what is the rationale that goes on in people's brains anyway but dating a bee is fine I, I get it and I you just don't understand yeah, I'm sorry. I don't understand. The bee's fine, or like in Beauty and the Beast, the beast is fine, or a frog, you know, Princess and the Frog. I'm trying to think. I know there's a handful of other ones. I know there are. It's just interesting. I wrote that down. I was like, why are people okay with a woman falling in love with a bee and not same sex couples? Why? Why? I don't know. Like, also, <laughs> Ken is like, so butthurt about the fact like when he walks in and she's having dinner with Barry and he's like what is this and she's like Ken I didn't know you were coming home and it's like what are you hiding like he's a freaking bee and he's like sitting at like a little like doll like a Barbie like play set or whatever eating steak or whatever the frick he was made that day and I'm just sitting here like this is Ken really jealous of Barry like is Vanessa really gonna break up with Ken for Barry he's gonna live like three more days and then you're done like what is going on but it was funny at times and other times I just couldn't suspend my disbelief enough for this hmm Yeah, it's very interesting because like you said, how he's going to be dead in a few days, but also they make it seem like Barry's just going to live forever. They, Barry starts helping at Vanessa's flower shop. And first of all, Ken comes by there. He's like, he's living my life. Or I don't remember what he says, but he was not happy. Because it was like Vanessa and Barry, flowers, honey, legal advice, because Barry was like his own lawyer or something in the lawsuit but oh my god yeah so then barry goes and helps other insects and speaking of other insects i have to say i think my favorite person in the whole movie is the mosquito (laughs) i think that's rock is it Uh uh-huh i'm like 99 percent positive this is a star-studded cast for literally no reason (laughs) Why did all these people, how much were they all getting paid? There was no reason they should have had this good of a cast. It was a weird movie. Right. It is Chris Rock. You are right. But he was so funny. And the puns they had with the mosquito, too. He was like, I can't. Oh, someone was like, oh, you're a lawyer now. He's like, I've already been a bloodsucker or something like that. Like a bloodsucking cretin or whatever it is. Yeah. I was oh, like good sorry. work or like when they're all stuck in windshield that's where Barry meets him is like he was flying around and he like gets plastered onto the windshield and the mosquito's like don't move if you move they'll you know wipe the windshield wipers but they were like on their way somewhere that had lots of blood or whatever oh he wanted to go to Alaska because like moose blood's really good and so he just kept calling Barry just kept calling him moose blood or something which was funny and Barry was just like the bee guy I don't know and then the mosquito which I don't even know his name moose blood just hops off when the windshield wipers start going and hops on there was a blood bank 
car like that's probably transferring blood to the hospital or to somewhere and that was funny because he gets on there and it's all these mosquitoes and they're like hey what's up (laughs) so there were like genuinely good parts but it's just the little snippets for me that were really good the overall plot of the movie made me want to like gouge my eyes out (laughs) it's like someone had to write this script and yeah, who wrote it? Were they on drugs? I'm just wondering. I'm not judging. I just want to know. You just want the facts. You? Yeah, we just want the facts here. Because, yeah, I wrote... Overall, like, I think the movie is cute. And I do think it's funny. I love the animation. I said, however, there's some very weird messages. And I watched it in four chunks. And it still felt very long. <laughs> I watched it in two. I didn't think it felt long. Um, I was very happy that it didn't last two full lunch breaks for me because I don't do long movies. And I think if it would have lasted any longer, I would have called Hannah and been like, we're not doing this movie anymore. Uh, But uh, I mean, I'm glad I watched it so that I can like be fully present in the movie conversation from here on out because now I know everything that happened in that movie and my uh, it's like an hour and 40 minutes I'll never get back but do I need that ever again no I will never watch this movie again I, if someone suggests it suggests it I'm gonna be like respectfully I gotta leave the country if you're gonna watch this movie <laughs> do you want to get into the whole suing the lawsuit the honey the like all of that stuff I do I I I do I need to hear I'll let you start to lead this conversation and I will jump in but I (laughs) excited and it's like I'm done with the with the foreplay here let's get to the main event all right here we go okay so the the way that Barry like discovers that humans are using their honey is it when he's at the grocery store is that the first time he notices it yes as far as I remember he is in the grocery store aisle and yeah with Vanessa Lord knows if I remember why he was in the grocery store I literally can't Vanessa and I think they're just go- hanging out together because they're in love mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it, notice it something to like, do with sweetening something. Yeah, so he noticed there was honey, like shelves and shelves of honey. And he was like, what is this? They're using our honey that we produce that we worked so hard for and like was freaking out about it and was like, they're stealing our honey. Like, that's not okay. Like, who's doing this? And so Vanessa like lets him in on the fact that like it's honey farms are the ones that produce it it's like the company so he sneaks into the warehouse of the grocery store and finds the like honey farms truck it just got done unloading and that's where he meets the mosquitoes on the honey farms truck that's what it is and so he's like following it to the honey farms which when he gets there he notices there's like row after row after row of beekeeping hives, you know, that you would see at a bee farm somewhere, you know, the one where they have like the slots that they pull out, etc. And this freaks him out. He's like, oh my God, because there's these two guys that just got like these like fumigator guns, basically that like stun the bees long enough so that they don't sting them when they collect the honey off of the troughs or whatever. And this really freaks Barry out because he's like, they're killing them or whatever, but they just like are paralyzed and can't move and like get weak and stuff like that. And he goes in and is like, what are they doing to you? And one of the random bees is like, don't worry, it'll wear off in in a little while. Like this is just part of the job and stuff. And he's like, but they're taking the honey you're producing. Like what the heck? And so he really gets fed up with this. And my first question is, aren't bee farms good? I thought that they were good for the earth or for bees or for someone. Bee farms aren't. Uh, natural pollination gardens are. Okay. 
then that helps to pollinate save mm-hmm. the bees but a bee farm would just be like the same at least from my understanding is like the same as if you're having any sort of factory farmed animal that's mm-hmm. not beneficial to the planet um i don't know if it's as terrible for the planet as like raising cattle or things like that where that emits uh gases well, methane. And, yeah right yeah. it's methane gas from like not only their toots but like they have huge this is gonna get gross for a second they have like these huge like cesspools basically of their waste like I read a whole thing (laughs) about it Hannah are you laughing because I said they're toots (laughs) anyway but they like they have huge like an acre size of like animal waste on some of these farms which is like absolutely bad for the earth it's disgusting and (laughs) stop it (laughs) so i understand like that also is bad for them on top of like the whole like milk production and things like that so i was just under the impression it's probably big honey that's telling me this that i thought bee farms were okay yeah because bees are very good for the planet it just depends on how they are i mean if you have to think about it if they're stuck inside these boxes all the time how's that helping the earth Mm mm-hmm So after he goes and discovers these bee farms, right, he decides he's going to sue the honey business, the people who, the big food companies that profit off of honey, which goes really well. He and Vanessa are working together on this. Adam is working on it with him. All of the bees show up to the lawsuit and they're like, can these bees really talk let's find out at five on this big huge like and it is a huge lawsuit like if we found out that every food company was being sued because of like their honey consumption like you best believe that's gonna be on every news station like that for sure is actually big news so I don't actually like I think that's very accurate plus bees are the ones suing them which would definitely make the top news so that's interesting And they, so they go through the lawsuit. This lawyer is really effing weird and like, doesn't think about use. So he's losing. Okay. And in the final day, doesn't even realize that like, oh, I should probably remind them how much they hate bees, like before the end of the trial and doesn't even talk about the fact that like they sting people and people are allergic to their bee stings until the like final hour okay and it's so funny because one of the jurors like wears a black and yellow striped shirt and is like yeah bear. <laughs> like not impartial at all that's beside the point so even after his big huge production of getting stung by adam who definitely should die but doesn't i didn't even feel bad like i didn't have any emotions during that moment because it was so effing ridiculous and i could like he is like holding out his butt like oh i hope no one stings me like what the frick is going on and like this is off the bees enough so that adam stings him i guess and to be like look he's bad anyway after all of that they like have to come up with like they have one more day like they're closing statements basically and Barry has this brilliant idea and brings in the bee smokers that he saw that were stunning all the bees before and is like this kills bees like it's so bad it like forces them to be addicted to this and like you work them really hard and stuff like that and it kind of like I don't know if I think they were like leaning towards like this is like slavery (laughs) which was the one really funny part was like this is all at the hands of the white man and then the one black lawyer was like not me though like get me out of here and that's not me (laughs) which was pretty funny but it was like this big like slavery motif or like symbolism or something whatever the right word is bees win the trial because the guy like it's like this isn't dangerous and then like half the bees fall down and are like oh god that like stunned me and I could die or whatever and so Barry and them win and all the honey like is being pumped back into the hives and like Hannah said is that they like stop production but then like the whole world like dies and here's why confusion is that 
they do this big production is like it's like slavery making honey like we overwork our bees and stuff and yes I understand like some animals actually like having jobs and like it's just instinctual for them but it was like they made this huge production of like how bad bee farms are and then they're like oh wait but maybe we should have them again because maybe humans can use our honey well I don't think it was a bee farm as much as it was their hive was going to continue to produce honey Mm -hmm. but they weren't going to have the bees at those farms in those boxes being fumigated after they had made honey that was what the difference was right but it's like how are they making these changes and like being able to get this much honey production by these i don't think a child can i don't think that they were going to go back to ethically harm or farming bee honey but that's just me it just seemed confusing the messages were like bees shouldn't be working for humans pleasure and then they're like oh but like maybe it's fine though like it was just really weird it was confusing and I don't think they did a good job in that aspect and then they also like I like the setup of the Pasadena floral show at the beginning um because Vanessa is a florist of course because Barry has to fall in love with a florist (laughs) who else would he obviously and they realize that they have to go to Pasadena to like steal a float with flowers on it and bring it to New York. I don't know. Hannah, do you want to talk more about the lawsuit or anything real quick before we get to this stupid section? Um, I don't think there's much more to say on the lawsuit other than it's like honestly (laughs) I think you need to watch it to really experience what happened and it's a lot to dissect it kind of leaves you speechless I suppose that's how I feel and I don't that's why I don't have much to add to it because I don't think my brain can fully formulate the thoughts I have on it because it was just a lot but this flower event happens every year it's a parade of roses specifically I believe there's a name or something that has rose in it rose bowl I don't know uh rose championship there was something and then there was a play on that and Barry says something about I didn't know flowers could do sports or something it's a tournament of roses yeah okay um and so it kind of gives me um Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade vibes it's that type of parade only it's all flower floats and I really didn't like Barry and Vanessa get there and they decide to take the princess and the pea or whatever that story is supposed to be called a float and Barry is saying something about there's something wrong with the float or this girl who's playing the princess needs to go talk to management I don't know but Vanessa moves the stairs to get up to this float that's really high so she just falls off and gets hurt so that Vanessa can be on there and I didn't like that I was like that's mean but then they take this float because what other way then they strap it into the airplane or like it gets rolled up into the airplane to fly back to New York and then of course when they're on the plane something goes wrong and Barry goes up to the front to talk to the pilots about something. Oh, that he, they have to land the plane because this storm's coming in. And he's like, yeah, well, you have to land because there's flowers on the plane. And if we don't land with these flowers, they're all going to die. And if they die, then the whole world's going to die forever. And then they are like freaking out because, you know, there's this bee in the cockpit. And then long story short, they're both unconscious and Barry pages Vanessa to the front. And then they're like trying to fly the plane but then autopilot breaks because they get hit by lightning I believe and then the bees all come and start flying under the plane to just carry the plane to New York and then they land because the other bees are on the ground making this flower thing and the the people watching the plane land are all like oh it's landing like a bug How's it landing like a bug? And at the beginning of this movie, that made me remember that it says that bees 
scientifically, or I don't know the word they used, but are not supposed to be able to fly just by the size of their body and their wings. And yet then this plane is landing how a bee would. Well, and it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, the theme is like, there's a lot of small jobs in the hive, but like when small jobs are done well, they make a big difference. I don't think it was executed well in this specific case because I don't think there were a lot of small jobs in uh, saving this plane from crashing. <laughs> I think that's all big jobs. I know they're all small doing it. I don't think uh, I don't think that counts. I don't think they did a good job there. It was really weird. It and like the theme wasn't there throughout the whole movie. Like it wasn't building up to that moment. Usually when you're watching a good film and they have a theme, they literally like stated the theme right away because they said it like during orientation or something. And it came back in the end, like they tried to do that. But every step, the suing of the honey farms, you know, falling in love with Vanessa, like breaking up with Ken, starting this floral business, like going and stealing the float and flying back. None of that was like small jobs along the way, you know, help everybody and make a big difference. None of that fit the theme at all, at all. And so it just like, it was like two different movies trying to mesh themselves together. And this is what happened by accident. Yeah, it definitely seems a little not cohesive it's um something is not just adding up correctly and I don't know if there was multiple writers I don't know if someone wrote half of this five years prior and then finished it I don't know what happened but something did not exactly line up it was kind of like you're trying to fit these puzzle pieces together and it just you know you can make it work um, but it was not actually the piece designed to go in there. That's what I was feeling. It just, oh, yeah. something was a little off. Trying to cram in the pieces just to finish the puzzle faster and yeah, end up with something not even close. Um, well, going back to the whole like stealing the float and like flying the plane, I was like, oh, that's a really smart idea, you know, going to the Pasadena flower parade and stealing the flowers to pollinate the rest of the world that's creative and then literally a second later I wrote and they ruined it because of like all the games and look when you animate a film you have so many more open doors you know so many more possibilities it doesn't mean you should do all of those possibilities okay like just because you can have a bee trying to fly a plane and like the whole like the nose of the plane like trying to find the flowers okay that was kind of funny but not enough and like they tried too much and failed epically in my opinion and I was not ready for that I was any time I was expecting something to happen I should have just kept my mouth shut and been like expect the unexpected Exactly. Expect the unexpected of this movie. If you're going to watch the first like 30 minutes of it, honestly, do it. Good, good, good. (laughs) The whole movie. I mean, prepare yourself. You might want to just watch it just to see what we're talking about and to fully experience what we're talking about. But it really is a movie that has left me mostly speechless because I, I just don't know how to describe it. There's really nothing like it, okay? And apparently when you're a child and you watch it and then you watch it when you're an adult, you've blacked out half the movie. So I don't know. I don't know. It's just very unique and there's really nothing like it. So I have a really fun, fun fact for everybody. Um, so with the B movie, I remember that there was this fan theory that I don't know if anyone has ever watched iCarly out there but there is a theory that Freddie Benson iCarly's camera person you know the the boy in the main cast he is the product of his mother in the show and Barry Benson the bee and they he is the love child of those two characters and the more I think about it the more I look at his face 
the more I believe it for sure. Also Benson, hmm, that's a little suspicious and we never see his dad. They don't really say where his dad is. It's probably because he's a bee and he's just so small. You can't see him. I don't know. What do you think about this fan theory, Hannah? Is it intriguing? It is intriguing. I mean, I've never heard it before, but I also don't know if I could dispute that as a fact. So I'm thinking there's something there. I mean, it it's definitely possible. In a world where Vanessa could date a bee, why couldn't Mrs. Benson? And why couldn't they have a child together? <laughs> Yeah, because that makes sense. It makes sense. But honestly, I don't think I have a single thing left to say on this movie. Do you? I think, unfortunately, I've talked for about 30 to 40 minutes about it. I didn't think that ever happened in my life. And I think that's plenty of time to talk about the B movie and actually analyze parts of it. Yeah. We put our thoughts and and our knowledge and we've used our brains here to try and figure out the B movie, which you're welcome. We did it for you, for all of you out there. You're welcome. I'm not sure if we figured it out, but we tried. I will run through our social media while Hannah tries to pull it together over there. <laughs> If you want to email us suggestions, you know, comments, questions, what we're feeling, email us at you talking to me podcast at gmail.com. Go to our Instagram to follow us. We post exclusive content on there. We have Instagram live podcasts as well once a month. Uh, that will be at you talking to me dot podcast. If you want to follow us on Twitter, it's at you talking to me 11 because we're both number one and go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, like, and comment on our videos, go and hit the notification bell so that when you are subscribed, you get notified whenever we post. And then you can also set those reminders to your phone by turning on the notifications under your settings. And just, this is sad, Hannah, because next week, is our last podcast of season two. Can you believe that we're already there? We've almost, and they're getting close to having a full year of this podcast as well. Isn't that nuts? Just two months away. And it's been- We should probably have a special episode on our one year mark, I feel like. Maybe we will. just come up with that idea. (laughs) Maybe we will. You heard it here live, folks. Maybe we will. Tell us if you want us to- react to the first podcast we made just you know something and you know if you're watching youtube just let me know what you're thinking at this moment because only our youtube watcher listener people uh got to experience what just happened so if you're curious as to what that is gotta go find the youtube Head on video. Over. well with that I'm getting, I'm getting sad because this is our second to last podcast. We will be taking a basically one week off. Last time it was two, this time it's just going to be one. So don't worry. You can catch up any of the podcasts you missed before. Watch some movies, go listen to our content. You can find our Instagram lives. Most of them, one of them deleted, which is very sad, but most of them are saved on our IGTV. If you want to catch up on those, if you just aren't awake at 11 a.m. slash 10 a.m. Central Standard Time uh, on Sundays, which I don't blame you, or if y'all are at church or whatever you're doing, you can catch up on those later. But this is the end of this episode. That I'm Rachel. I'm Hannah. And this was a You Talking to Me podcast. Bye. Bye.